Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Enter the Gungeon. It's me, Tech, and today, let's continue our quest to try and get to the rat floor. Even if we don't beat it, we want to at least try and make it there. So let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try and do it. What that does mean is that, unfortunately, I probably won't, probably won't be able to open any chests. Because I want, I need to go to the blue in order for the red key. So we will open any chests this floor. And I also won't be able to buy anything. Especially in terms of uh, things like keys or items even. On the previous run, we came close. We came pretty close to getting to the red floor. We missed it by about two casings if I remember correctly. That was kind of heartbreaking. But, uh, you know, sometimes things just don't work out. I mean, it was partially my fault because I did buy the drill from the shop, even though I probably shouldn't have. But the drill kind of was extremely important to our run. Actually, a lot of open chests, so using keys. And definitely a lot of access to a lot more items than we otherwise would have. Yeah, now I am gonna open that. I'm gonna wait a little bit to open that. I don't know whether we want to gun force this floor. But, I mean, we may end up doing so. And if we do, actually, I think we might want to. Definitely. So I think we might not want to open our ground chest just yet. The reason why I didn't play the Hunter today is because I think we definitely need all, all the advantages we can have. Uh, getting to the red floor and starting off with a decent weapon and boss killer definitely is very important. Because we may not be able to open any chests on this floor. We did get the brown chest this time, but that's a bit of an anomaly. Speaking. A little bit weird today. Okay. Blue chest, blue chest. Probably not gonna be able to open that, unfortunately. But we'll see. Maybe the game will surprise me. Since we're not probably not gonna be opening any other chests, let's just head on into our boss room and try to feed the gathering call. Yes, in this case. Okay. Don't get exploded. Always a good idea. is probably going to be a boss killer as well. It might be a boss killer as in it has very good defensive abilities in addition to decent damage. So we'll see. Let's see what we end up like getting. And now I can kind of use the crossbow more freely because um, we have a room here. I also have a sawed off, not very good. Still, decent room here again. Just 
throw this on the hole. I'll go into a bit. I don't think the sawed off is very good, by the way, but uh, it's usable. Definitely wait for the first floor. Okay, let's put it between the crossbow and the sawed off. Just keep swimming. And it reminded me of. It definitely reminded me of Hanini. I mean, obviously. But I was wondering. Uh, I was thinking like, what are some of the iconic movies? Like really iconic movies that I can't define your child. For me, one of them. Definitely was Finding Nemo for sure. It was a little. I mean, I, I don't want to date myself too hard here, but I'm just gonna say that it wasn't the. It wasn't new when I watched it. And I watched it. Uh, I watched it. You know, pretty young. Definitely one of the first movies I do remember watching. Also, I think. The copy that of it that I watch was on VCD. So that might tell you something else.
this loot bag even do? Okay. Oh, I think it makes us get a lot more casings, but in exchange, we we drop casings when we get. Good if you can play well. Also, I think it reduced our speed. Uh, it's obviously a reference to the payday item. To payday. Uh, not the item, but just payday. No. Face powder. Great boss clip for us. So, I think we have our two. Guns that would be really needed. Uh, Huntsman is our room clearer and base monster is our boss. Boss good. Although the Huntsman probably wouldn't do very it wouldn't do poorly at all as our boss clear boss clear either. I think I can match the sword off and the crossbow. Let's see what it gives us. Flare gun, not very good. But oh well. What were you expecting from two brown chest guns? Okay, 
all this stuff is our boss. And let's go. Just say. Okay, you know what? We're going again. We're going again. That was a little bit disappointing. I apologize. But let's try again. Let's try again. We didn't even make it out of the movie at that time. That was kind of disappointing for sure. But at least we unlocked the loot bag. Uh, so what actually happened in the shop, in case you were wondering, is that I had no choice. I had to fight the mimic. And what that meant was basically I violated the no shooting rule in the shop and the shopkeeper got very mad at me and closed the shop. And that apparently allows me to get the loot back. I'm not sure what the interaction there is exactly, but it worked out for me. That's essentially what happened. In case you were wondering like why everything disappeared from the shop. Okay, so back to the thing about childhood movies. Another thing that definitely shaped another movie that definitely shaped my childhood, or at least was like one of the huge movies back then, uh, was The Incredibles. It was our first First real superhero movie, and it was animated, yeah, some people may not have been a huge fan of that, but I think the animation, even now, has aged really well. It's, it's aged really well. I don't think anyone will deny that. It still is really good, even today. Okay, at least I don't feel so guilty about shooting these chests. Um, yeah, it had a really, really good animation for its time, for sure. Um, it had a brilliant soundtrack, really nice characters, great message. This is like the complete package, really. And it gave us our first look at kind of superhero movies. Uh, in that same vein, something that great, another great animated film during the time was The Lion King. Definitely was huge and had every right to be. I mean, it was a really good movie. A classic for sure. We had great voice acting cast. People like Rowan Atkinson as Zazu, uh, Jeremy Irons as Scar. Really great talent. Definitely. But one of the, I guess, okay, this is not quite my childhood, and still my childhood. Definitely the Nolan Batman trilogy. The Dark Knight is still one of my favorite movies of all time, just because of Heath Ledger's performance as a joke. Um, yeah. Still a really great movie, even up to this day. I mean, Nolan just is such a visionary with his work. I don't think anyone's gonna dispute that. Inception, for sure, made a huge impact uh, when I was growing up. But okay, I think it tells of what gen a little bit of what generation I am from. I didn't watch many of the many of the Disney Princess movies. I know those are a huge part of childhood for some of people. I just think maybe they're a little, they're a little bit before my time, perhaps. Or maybe as, as a guy, I was never too into the Disney Princess movies. 
but I mean that's not really quite fair. Oh, I can't even really to damage it, but yeah. Thanks. I mean, show the uh, films like Aladdin, the original one, not the remake. Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella. Uh, yeah, not really in my wheelhouse. Not part of my cinema. What's this? I don't remember what that term is, so like movies you've watched. But yeah, not, not really part of my collection there. But I, I, I definitely recognize that they are extremely good movies and should be watched. I mean, even the remakes today seem like they've been done pretty well. Beauty and the Beast remake did pretty good. I mean, definitely made a huge impact in the market, especially with like the remake of the songs and everything. I think that was honestly one of the main selling points, was remaking those iconic songs with modern artists. Definitely a thing to be commended, uh, Disney bringing back that kind of, uh, that kind of, yeah, just that kind of scope. And then, okay, on the topic of movie remakes, I mean, I don't know about you guys, I'm fine with not getting it. I'm, okay, it depends on the movie, obviously, but I'm usually kind of fine without getting a remake. Like, too often, especially with things like anime, that's like the medium I'm more familiar with. You see, things get ruined by their remakes, honestly. Like, eh, I'm not, I'm not like flaming people with remake stuff. I think it's a definitely a honorable thing to do. But sometimes you just can't capture the original, and people inevitably kind of compare back and forth because there is that comparison. To be a me there. You are remaking a classic. Otherwise, you wouldn't be remaking it. And it's a classic for a reason. Same thing, I think it's the same idea with like sh movies that are getting sequels, sh movies or shows that are getting sequels like many years after they originally aired. Like, James Cameron's Avatar. Not sure why he's doing it, but... Okay, I, I mean... I'm interested to see what's gonna happen. I'm not sure why he's actually making... Like, I don't know how many more Avatars I've heard. It's somewhere in the realm of three. And it's kind of crazy to me, because... I mean... I love the world that Avatar was set in. I wouldn't mind seeing more of it, but do we really need more movies? No. I felt that the, Ava the first Avatar kind of gave us a nice, complete story. And it doesn't really need much more. But maybe that's just my opinion. I mean, I'll, s I'll still probably watch. Wouldn't, right? I mean, it's there. I still watch it, but would it be high on my priorities? Not really. Definitely wouldn't get as hyped over it as something like that game. Oh, I forgot we done the wax wings on this run. Sorry. Oh, not in a good place. Again. Is there any armor in the shop that we can buy? Although I don't think we can afford to buy it. No, nope, not even that. So, all right. Is it time for us to see this best gun available? B G A. 
by the way. Uh, sorry if I'm not a K-pop fan. I know I just... Some people are like, Is he a K-pop fan? Oh my gosh. Let's, let's go again. Come on, let's go again. Let's go again. I think this will be the last run of the episode, but you know, let's try. Let's try. Yeah, but I'm sorry. I'm not a K-pop fan. Uh, I am a weeb through and through. No time for... Not time to be a career boo. In addition to being a weeb. Definitely not something I can... I think I can handle. That's on my schedule. And my... Thank you very much. Fine with taking a half out of damage for... Guarantee us access into the Ubiet, even though we can definitely buy one from the shop. Like, the shop is guaranteed to have a key, I think, every time. They used to be, but nice little change, balance change that the developers made. Was I see? Oh my goodness. So yeah, and I'm not so sure about remakes. I mean, the one that really comes to my mind, at the forefront of my mind, is Berserk. Berserk is an anime, uh, really nice and gory, dark, mature themes. It had an, an it had an anime adaptation in uh, the 90s. And that was really good, excellent. Definitely a eight up, eight or nine, eight out of ten. You know what I mean? But then it had uh, and they kind of competed with this, the one of quite a few of the story arcs in the manga, right? It's adapted from. And then a new adaptation in 2016 came out that was aiming to adapt some of the other arcs, but in my opinion, I think in many people's opinion, that adaptation really fell short of the original series. Well, it's almost, a, in my mind, it's kind of a disservice to the manga almost. I mean, it was, I thought it was really terrible. And I understand it's supposed to not be. didn't, wasn't good. Uh, I mean, people can disagree with me on that, I think. Although I don't think it's that contentious. But yeah. Very nice. This is probably a two. But yeah. Definitely wasn't what we were looking for in a remake. And I mean, on that note, if you're talking about things like a long-awaited sequel, recently, definitely, there's been a huge fuss about One Punch Man uh, Season 2, and what that kind of, like, the kind of, what they are, the, the discussion that that kind of prompted, because basically, basically One Punch Man uh, it's a really great anime action genre, shonen kind of, with a very nice message thrown in. And, okay, so the original was done by Madhouse, and I can't remember what year it came out in, but... Okay, just suffice it to say, we've been waiting for a long time for the second season, right? And earlier this year, we got noticed that it was going to be coming out, and I was like, ooh, yay! But the catch was that it was no longer Madhouse doing it. If Madhouse was no longer doing the project, but instead it would be taken up by a different studio called JC Stuff. And for those in the anime community, you kind of know that JC Stuff not really known for their action. And that kind of set up a few alarm bells in everybody's heads, right? They're like, uh, 
Are you sure that this is a good idea? Like, on DC South's part, like, they're taking on a very highly anticipated um, sequel, right? And it was like, can they really pull this off? That was the question that's kind of going through everyone's heads. It's like, do they have the expertise to really give a sequel uh, a fair shake? And, you know, unfortunately, I think we all kind of think the anime community kind of agree. The answer to that question was no, they didn't. It didn't have the the charm, the storytelling of the original, and the action and at times have things to be desired for sure. And I think honestly I mean that was kinda of sad for sure. GC stuff I don't think doesn't deserve the flag that is getting. But I think it's very hard to deny and very hard to like argue that it was a sequel that lived up to the original. And sometimes it's fine, you know? It's like, it's not really their fault at all. But, uh, what could they do, right? Sorry, we just. Yeah, of course. Let me just, uh. Let me just gain some casually earn 10 casings here. But yeah, it's not their fault. But, uh,. Definitely wasn't what we were looking for in a sequel team. And it was. The, if the show was by itself, it was fine. You know, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. But it was fine. But in terms of looking at it as a sequel to one of the best animes I've ever watched, it definitely was not. It was not up to par. And that's what. I think that's the main issue that most people have with it. Is that the predecessor was so good that you couldn't help comparing it to it. And that really kind of really made it made the contrast between the two series. Like that kind of juxtaposition definitely didn't help it at all. Oh I think I believe that the blue one so slows down time when we hit those well and then we can check the these.
I hope that doesn't come in to bite me. I wish I could offer more, but that's kind of risky. As it is, I can't even bite. And that's kind of fun. Because I don't have anything that can really kill the boss. Except for the RPG, and. You know, that's a pretty long reload time. Okay. So the crest room is locked, so we're not getting back, obviously. It's not by the way. By the way, I mean I'm not being I'm trying I'm not trying to be pessimistic here, I'm saying good run. But I'm expecting this run to end on the red floor in the red flight. Like, Maybe in the red flight or before that. Which is the reason why I'm kind of squeezing in this third run. Because I don't think for a second that we're actually gonna win the red fight on our first try. I think that's a, a little bit too optimistic. Even for a night for anyone, really. I'm not saying that it can't happen, but do I think it will happen? Definitely not. Technically, it's like, oh, it's possible. 
possible for every run to the threat. So I was trying to say for her so we can be interrupted by my own bow skill. Let's head down to the next floor. We survived the oubliette, guys. There's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. Although I really have no good room clear. Uh, Void Marshal too. I can't see Void Marshal could be decent. Uh, boss killer for us, but I think the rotation will probably serve that. Ooh, very nice. Very generous of the game. Okay. That was very dumb for me. This is absolute. I thought they could beat the system, but I was here. Finally. If 
given up so much for. Okay. Boy Marshall is doing pretty well for us as well. Especially very nice with YV bonus. the blank right there. Yet. Oh, okay. Wow. I think I can't get him in it. Can't get that one. Why did I try anyway? Don't ask me. Don't at me. Yes, 
straight up reload faster. Helix. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's face the boss. I think we're going with the mutation. Yeah. No thanks, unfortunately. So we may have a tough time getting this for us. Oh, there you go. What did I exactly did I say? Hold it, but not like I really wanted to. The bullets stay on the screen, but the enemies produce more bullets, and then just have more and more bullets. It's like, excuse me. Also, I don't know why, but we seem to have some homing bullets or something. I am maybe it's like maybe it's also blue bullets. Because we definitely do seem to have some hope. Popping the orange shotgun. I don't think there's any shame in that either. Alright. Helix is also pretty decent, I think. Maybe not as a room clear because of environment. Okay. Using the orange. And it will never get better than that because it's a full health upgrade. Now that I think of it, it's basically aim assist for 
controller. I sent that I can see a mouse and keyboard, so it seems really OP. Where are you again? Where are you? I was about to say, if they didn't have a blank, I would be extremely mad. I was about to be very mad because I thought they didn't have a blank. I was like, literally the only thing that could ruin it for us was that, and I thought they had half. goes to the show. I'll bask there here. There we go. And remember we can't use our blanks, unfortunately, so I don't think we're going to get our boss. Unless we pay, play it extremely well. Something that I don't think is gonna happen. Very good gun. Very, very good. 
I might add. Okay, please. Thank you. And unfortunately, we don't have anything to open this with. So we will be shooting our chests. It's all the same. Slot accounts. And ladies and gentlemen of the ladies and gentlemen of the Jew, we have arrived at the red floor. And let's go. Let's let's go. This is the first time I've been here, truth be told. And... Okay, wait, let me check my ammo Navicon for what our directions should be. It is down, up, 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 up. Alright, very nice. Okay. Yeah. It down. So it's down, up, up again. You see, we just keep going up until. Basically, just keep going up until we reach the end. And the reason why I'm okay with using Dragon Fire, even though it's probably our best gun, is because we get ammo at the end of the Rat Floor before we go to the Rat Fight. You have no idea how much you just saved me. And thank you, my dog. Thank you very much. And let's head down into our first red fight in stage 2. This is the hard one. Ok, 
okay with all of that. It's time to switch to the dragon fire. So close to actually getting to punch out and having a chance of being like We got pretty far, you gotta admit. But thank you so much, everybody. We actually got to the rat. Now let's focus on trying to beat it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want and like if you please. And I'll catch you all next time. See you.